again. A man risks his life to save a woman from a blazing inferno. I told her to get on my back. So don't worry about it. I'll get you down. On the next, Rescue Around noon on January 8, 1991, in the small town of South River, New Jersey, fire broke out on the ground floor of a multi-unit apartment building. A couple of residents ran to an apartment building across the way, where Dwayne Lamb lived. I heard my cousin bang on the door. She said, uh, Dwayne, my apartment is on fire. South River Police, dispatcher two. The call for help went out, and the South River All Volunteer Fire Department was immediately dispatched to the scene. I didn't know how to respond to what was going on. She had no shoes on. We were going to go into the house to get her shoes, but there was too much smoke. Unaware of the danger below, a young woman was asleep in the apartment directly above the fire. Michael Benedetto was just across the street. I dropped my tools, I ran across the street. The flames were roaring, it must have been about a good 10 feet coming out the window. Officer Matthew Gurkowski was less than a mile from the apartment complex when he heard the call. From about a block away, you can see smoke going into the sky. When I arrived, the apartment complex unit, which was on fire, was uh, totally in flames. I thought that the apartment was going to blow up after I heard the windows being blown out. There was a lot of people out there, and I thought a lot of people might get hurt. Gregory Boldazar was the second police officer on the scene of the fire. I saw the uh, entire bottom apartment uh, immersed in flames. It was starting to break through the uh, floor onto the second apartment right above it. If somebody was in there, they wouldn't be able to uh, survive. By the time the young woman awoke, all her escape routes had been cut off by smoke and flame. I was there, but I didn't realize anybody was upstairs. Somebody yelled out the front of the window on top of the apartment that was on fire. Oh she sounded like she was uh, scared for her life. She could not get out. The only way up to her apartment and to get out of the apartment was being blocked by the fire. We were trying to get her to jump out, but she wouldn't jump out. A couple of the uh, area residents started uh, pointing and yelling that there's someone still in the apartment. I saw the victim in the apartment stick her head out. She uh, started like, someone help me, someone help me, someone save my cats. And she disappeared for approximately five minutes. We were still yelling for her to come to the window so we knew she was okay. When that explosion occurred, a lot of things were going through my mind. She might have been knocked down. She might have been unconscious from the smoke, but there was a lot of smoke. If 
you got someone who's trapped up in a building, I can't even imagine what's going through her mind, the terror. I felt a little sad and frustrated because uh, I thought she'd never come to the window. And when the fire would take over, that would be no chance for her to uh, come out. We are all yelling, jump, 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 you know, to get her attention. But she's in hysterics, like yelling for a cat. When she came to the window, we were trying to call her. We're trying to coax her into uh, hanging off the edge of one of the windows and letting herself fall, and we catch her. I couldn't make out what she was saying, but I gathered that she wouldn't jump because she might have been afraid of heights. The fire was like just so hot. I would have said about uh, five seconds more, and uh, the entire top floor would have been immersed in flames, and it would have been no hope for saving her. I really didn't even think. I just looked to see what I could do to get up to her. Within moments, the fire department arrived. Chief Thomas Karaniewski was in charge of putting out the blaze. As soon as she got out, the upstairs was also engulfed in flames. I told her to get on my back. She was a little leery about that. I said, don't worry about it. Just hold real tight, choke me if you have to. I'll get you down. If they let me, I would have went back up there and looked for the cats. I was just thinking and just picturing them burning. And that's what I think killed me the most. Let's go, guys. 23-year-old Teresa Roman was treated for smoke inhalation and minor burns and released later the same day. Right, ready to go down? We're up, guys. Though Teresa lost almost everything she owned, she and her boyfriend, Steve Anthony, are grateful that her dog, Spike, and two of her three cats survived. I don't know how he held on to the condom because it's right up against the wall. Spike. Must have been like Spider-Man. Tell you the way he climbed up and climbed down. I don't know how I did it. On February 6th, 1991, the city of South River presented a heroism award to Michael Benedetto for saving the life of a young woman he did not know. Michael uh, made himself stand out as a human being and put himself down as a superhero in my book. With him not knowing me, for him to do that, there's nothing you could really do to thank him for something like that. I mean, I owe him everything. I just like to be considered a good person, a good man, and I don't consider it a hero. You know, I don't, it's just like another day to me.